the um, the background of inviting everyone to this webinar was to be able to help all the key you know stakeholders in the Indian environment to be able to participate in the better design of um, swimming pools in India in the Indian context. Um, India has an amazing uh, pool of users. I mean, we have a high, you know, our country um, doesn't lack in the number of users, both at a participatory level as well as uh, the potential for high performance. The question often has been on how can we uh, create environments that can allow for better quality and quantity of participation in pools. And that's uh, the motivation of the session. A quick introduction of uh, the team that's with me from Mirtha at you know, uh, co-presenting this. Uh, starting with uh, Mr. Jay Shankar, you know, who's the national sales head and who will be subsequently giving more background on the design considerations. Um, Saif, who's, um, you know, handling uh, the sales for North. And uh, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Hakimuddin Habibullah. I'm the Managing Director for Maratha Pools India Private Limited, a subsidiary of uh, ANT Europe, which is the parent company headquartered in um, Italy. I'm also an Olympian swimmer. I swam for India at the Sydney Olympic Games and also an, ed an engineer by education. So, um, my role at Maratha brings the two loves of um, high performance engineering with the love for swimming and enabling um, every Indian to enjoy the water. This is a brief uh, video about uh, Maratha just to give a glimpse of uh, who we are. Some say it's only water, but for us, it's so much more. It's the challenge we rise to every day. It's the pleasure of teamwork. The joy of pure creativity. This is the story of how we give water a fresh new form by molding it into a sparkling masterpiece. This is where ideas bubble up, shaped by our Italian sensibility. The flair for creating timeless beauty. Our unique team can make every space truly special, just the way you want it. believe in riding the wave, in harnessing the latest advances to make something tangible, lasting, and perfectly formed. Every project is different, every solution unique and personalized. And with our meticulous, continuous planning, we assure our customers the best possible result every time. For us, every project is a way to learn something new, one step at a time. We are inspired by those who push their limits to create something new by those who commit to achieve their goal with dedication and drive. For success is not about luck, it's about those little things that make a big difference. The impeccable precision of every detail, the choice of the finest materials, and the passion for the beautiful and the beautifully made. Um, 
as a company, Martha Pools is a company that was established in 1961, so it's approaching close to 60 years um, in you know in its existence and the work it's done. We have a presence of uh, a Martha Pool in over 70 countries with 270 direct employees. We have five subsidiaries around the world. Uh, like I said, the, it's the company is headquartered out of Italy, and um, the office in India is the first one for Asia. Uh, we have over 400 representatives uh, and distributors around the world. And um, we, more importantly, coming to uh, where our learning comes from, <coughs> it is that we build 1,500 swimming pools a year of different shapes and sizes. Of them, more than 300 are large size public projects like Olympic pools. And uh, so it's almost like we build almost a big pool a day, every uh, you know a, a day of the year. So it gives a, gives a glimpse at the level of um, feedback and learning and know-how that multiple pools has been uh, having the privilege to and access to. So we are the um, official partners of FINA, which is the world body for aquatic sports. Uh, we've been their partners since 2009, and we also work with some of the top swimming federations around the world. We will share that in the next slide as well. But um, we are consistently chosen to be building the pools for the Olympic Games and World Championships. So for the Olympic Games, uh, we have built pools. Um, the first pool we built was in 1996 in Atlanta, but consistently since 2008, we have been involved in different capacity in, at different levels to be building pools for the Olympic Games and the World Championships. This slide gives a glimpse of our uh, uh, associations on the competitive front with the top federations. So FINA, of course, is the top, but alongside them, we work closely with European Aquatics and USC Swimming, the two biggest power hubs of uh, competitive sport. And you'll see some of the other, um, you know, uh, logos. You might recognize them by the by their symbols. Uh, so we work with organizations like uh, the Japan Swimming Federation, uh, Brazil, uh, France, um, uh, you know, and England, Canada, and and also you know towards supporting the development of the sport in India, uh, we are also supporting and working closely with the Swimming Federation of India. Uh, I would hand over now to Jay uh, to take forward the presentation on the design considerations. I will be around and I will be, um, you know, taking um, so the, another part of the presentation subsequently. And we'll be again happy to get you some of your thoughts. I would request you to keep dropping your thoughts on the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Hakim. Uh, Hakim, I'm sorry for the video. I think at the end of my session, we can play that video again. So good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you for being a part of uh, this uh, this session today. Uh, before we get ahead with the presentation, we would like to mention why we chose this uh, session of this kind and then done a series. Uh, firstly, we believe that there is a tremendous scope of improvement in the aquatic facilities, what we build with respect to the facility which is built in the other part of the world. To achieve the first one, the second point, we think that the transfer of know-how between the stakeholders, vendors like us, architects and engineers like you needs to happen frequently. So these are two things for which we are actually running this webinar or session today, followed by multiple uh, going ahead. So now coming to the design consideration before I get into the. So we have chosen about seven points in total. We have just uh, jotted down seven points. In this section, we are trying to cover a few important parameters as a designer you should pay attention to, to possibly check out the best solution for your customer's requirement. While we do not say these are the only things, but yes, these are the ones which last with 60 years of experience we have brought onto TB. So to begin with, the first point is the purpose of the pool. It's important as you see, a uh, pool could be part of any facility, an institution, a competition, a multi-use community of any kind. It is important to understand what is the desired outcome of the pool. Like who are the people? What is the program going to run into the pool? This will all give you a very uh, 
maybe uh, maybe some interesting starting points like profile dimensions etc again an important parameter in design the second one we should we should it is important that there is a maximum utilization of the pool uh, and for that we have to design a pool for different age group possibly uh, gender friendly and most important for the specially abled people now when you consider all these things you may invite a need of special elements like varying the profile ramps lifts and maybe aquatic therapies or leisure activity the basic objective behind this is how do you encourage that everyone uses the pool which will result into maximizing the utilization so that's the second thing which we have identified swimming is a very basic form of exercise for for everyone and people particularly in various sports the various sportsmen the athletes the athletes they they use swimming as a very important exercise to for their rehab for the relaxation stamina building or even for fitness so when you consider all this swimming becomes a heart of the entire ecosystem of building of any academy or training facility so as a designer it's again very important to understand how to place a swimming pool in the entire scheme of ecosystem of a academy fourth presently most of the swimming pool at least in india which we build only focus on swimming as the only event or only sport which happens in water wherein at least there are three other major events which happens a major uh, aquatic sport which happens and and which gains a lot of attention which is like diving water polo artistic which we also call a synchronized swimming now each of these sports requires a different kind of detailing the pool dimensions the depth profile the there are many other parameters so we'll have to always see how our swimming pool can actually take care of all these sports instead of building pool for each and every activity separately so this is also one thing which is very important when you design a swimming pool if i can call you have to actually add lot of features accommodate lot accommodate lot of features to make it possibly uh, all weather pool a multi purpose pool the way i explained in the previous example run various program at one particular time which will call in for a lot of solution lot of innovative engineering solutions including water treatment for example a competition pool will require a different degree of engineering altogether for example if even if you want to have build a special event pool you will have to design it tomorrow that how it can be relocated or reinstall a different place so uh, all the special event pool which we will show in the later stage you could always see that they are actually tomorrow relocated most of the time so different so there has to be a flexibility in the engineering design to actually achieve that similarly for the maintenance part and the operations part Uh, 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 I am aware that each and every civil construction or any kind of project has a lot of its own challenges. So I will not get into details because the architect and engineers on the other side of the webinar, I am aware that you are aware. But still, to give a broad line, uh, budget timelines, kind of projects, material availability, multiple vendor coordination, execution of work as desired, could always drive you to choose a particular technology, which again is a part of a design consideration. One of the last. parameters which which unfortunately comes in the last slide of my presentation as well but a very important parameter is uh once while we design the pool for the operations but once the pool is up and running it has it undergoes its own weathering and it undergoes its own uh aging during that entire during that thing uh the regular cycle of issues which crops up so considering this parameter which is displayed on the ppt i think we need to be aware of each of the parameters and accordingly make a fair assessment on the drawing table before designing the before actually arriving on the actual requirement of the customer so these are seven things which i which we have identified now if i want to summarize these are the few things on each of these slides right from project location for example a project coming up in a seismic zone or a project with a high water table or a project with a, a, a black cotton a black clay soil so each of the so our pool for each of these requirements would vary so this needs to be considered in the design stage so it doesn't remain common for all the all the site conditions pool location whether it's a uh, whether it's underground pool whether it's above ground pool or whether it's even elevated pool 
pH of the pool would vary whether it's an indoor pool outdoor pool whether you want a corridor to access the pool or not to access the pool so each of these types changes the changes the pool requirement altogether who are the users number of users what's the program which is being scheduled to happen in that event is also important to know one of the uh, when you look at the complete solution even today swimming pool is largely split into as a swimming pool structure and the water treatment the accessories for the swimming pool and the competitions largely lie with the mep or the or so called water treatment guy but if you look at most of our pools today there there is there is lot of uh, integrated there is a lot of integrity i mean structural integrity issue between the water element accessories the water treatment and the pool so it's extremely critical that one particular person does the entire entire package so that they are structurally integrated and they give a desired performance at a very low maintenance so it's important it's a complete solution from one hand hygiene and safety standards today uh, em standards have one of the highest degree in terms of safety and hygiene and it's a good practice for us to actually even uh, apply them into our design it's a very important element to encourage lot of people to use a pool because lot of people including myself not now some few years ago we were hesitant to go to pool because of the hygiene and safety standards but uh, we are aware that en practice a very good high level of degree in this so that should be considered while looking to design pool construction guidelines while fina has given a set of guidelines for the competition competitive training pool which we can widely use into our institution and other pools as well but understanding the requirement of pool as i said in my first slide can always get us aligned to the guidelines of fina as well accessories depending upon the purpose of or people or the program which is running again the accessory of pool would vary right from competition accessories comp operational and even water treatment this would largely depend upon the purpose of the pool this determines the cost the timelines and the integration at a design stage it is also important that how to integrate different accessories into structure which will result into safe usage long term performance and less maintenance materials many times it's observed due to not having a proper information or know how from the user perspective or vendor perspective materials which are chosen are with very less understanding resulting resulting into a loss of intent for example starting blocks is a very important element in you can you can check you can ask any swimmer how important is a starting block but even in the most prominent pools in our country we see lot of compromise done on the starting block similarly choice of waterproofing overflow gutters water treatment equipments needs to be thoroughly understood to include in the design appropriately right at at initial stages finally the finishes finally if the output if the vendor is able to meet the concept which a user and architect proposed during the design stage it's a sweet without any compromise it's a sweet end provided it's functionally meeting the requirement but again it needs to be understood that operation and maintenance are also one part for the functional requirement for example today we see a lot of tiles being used as a standard practice on the wall of the pool while it serves the aesthetic purpose but on the functional or operational uh, side if you look at tomorrow the, the repair issues are really very critical so it fails in that particular mode by this i i would conclude my presentation but i would just like to give a small introduction that on the competition pool we have developed uh, with uh, working with fina and some renowned architects a basic guideline which is now displayed on your system which we call a design and development guide for sustainable aquatic facility this is largely for the uh, competitive training and competition pool so as you see in this we we have categorized the pool into five categories the first one being a very simple pool for us which you could use it for a institution for a training academy to the last ac5 which can be used for a special event pool so this very clearly explains how the pool has to be designed what is the capacity so it has actually more details i have just shared one which is relevant today to speak about actually it's a it's a good 200 page guideline which is a good starting point but largely for the institution competition and competitive training based on this we can also develop something on the hospitality uh in the in the upcoming series uh once 
uh, once we conclude the session in the upcoming series we can talk on the other segments like hospitality as well and now with this i would like to hand it over to hakeem to actually take you through to some references of projects what we have done uh, in the in 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 all other part of the world which will give you some indications of what ascopa work or what all we have done in that so hakeem to you now thank you jay so we we thought it will be good to again you know give a glimpse of some of the points that uh, jay had highlighted uh, but putting it in context with some of our you know references around the world uh, you know that gives some context to uh, visually as well to what we would like to see in india on the top left to begin with this is a community pool in canada as you can see the prioritization is on making it friendly for every member of the family to be able to come in and engage in a safe and comfortable setup one of the first things you see in the photo would be that you know there's a zero entry splash pad uh, for very young children to be able to come in enjoy uh, and and play just to give an idea even from a safety consideration in the design uh, our pools are usually you know when we work with our, with the architects we normally uh, would would suggest the consideration of a soft element below uh, so that when children are playing and they fall or slip or you know in the shallow water uh, there is an opportunity to absorb impact while that happens so it creates a safe and also the quality of um, the uh, surface so when we're talking about standards it's also a question of uh, having a certain degree of acceptable anti slip element in such uh, shallow spaces that allows for uh, a safe comfortable um, feel for the children uh, engaging this area also close to it from a design perspective uh, also like literally adjoining it you know you can see a little further into that picture is a space for adults to engage who are possibly either there for relaxation or um, you know are not very competent swimmers who just would like to wade or to use the waters from a therapeutic perspective and um, you know you have uh, the the opportunity of a jacuzzi uh, uh, you know it's the, all these spaces are generally warmer water so even the temperature of water is a point of attention when you know the type of design to make them comfortable for the elderly people to engage and further away which is not really well visible is um, you know a, a short course 25 meter pool for more competent swimmers to be able to engage uh, and that's you know so it kind of creates an opportunity for everyone in the community of irrespective of age irrespective of physical ability or uh, competent uh, com you know competency of swimming to be able to still come in and um, enjoy uh, the water the next picture on the top right is uh, that of uh, the rio olympic games the rio olympic games you know and this is in the context of uh, the other end of the spectrum which is uh, high performance competitive uh, setups now this pool this is the photo of the main comp competition pool which was it, it which was built by us i mean we had 18 other pools as well but this is a, this is the primary competitive pool it's 3 meters deep now again in terms of considerations and a point that jay has highlighted before is why different depths need to be considered a question uh, you know you will you, you know that we again commonly come across is um, should we now build pools 3 meters deep and we just tell them that you have to pay attention we, we our suggestion is to pay attention on the use the the reason for usage this pool was built 3 meters deep because this was going to be the venue for the final events beyond swimming it was going to be used even for water polo and for artistic swimming so from an efficiency instead of building many other competitive venues for the final events for the other uh, disciplines 
having a single venue for all these uh, events made sense. And that was the logic of why uh, today for some of the special events, the pools are being built three meters deep. It's all, another point, critical point of consideration uh, for a special event like these big events. Uh, and, and in India, I could possibly relate it to say the national games that we uh, anticipate happening um, at certain periodic intervals. But uh, you know, when you build large infrastructure, but often without understanding what happens after. So in Rio, uh, for the first time, the complete stadium was uh, built in a manner that it could be dismantled, including the swimming pool using our technology. And uh, our swimming pool was actually one of the first one, first elements uh, post the event to get dismantled and then reinstalled uh, permanently in a community where it would have um, higher utilization and benefits to that community. So it's a critical point of attention, even like Jared mentioned, in anticipating the purpose. So building for a purpose, building for a certain performance. Uh, also, the deeper the pool, one of the other things as a competitive swimmer myself, uh, we are aware that uh, the pool, the deeper it is, it also does make, uh, does have an impact on making the swimming pool faster because there's less disturbance or bounce back from the floor. So um, it does also have a minor benefit in the um, uh, outcome of um, the performances. Another minor point of attention, I mean, not minor, uh, another critical point of attention is the quality of water treatment that's integrated. Now, the Rio Olympic Games also kind of became um, a, you know, a, a, a point of attention where there were two pools that were of an older generation, um, uh, not built or managed by Mirtha during the games that um, accidentally started turning green in color. And, um, and and that's where I think for the one of those rare times uh, it, it became globally visible and the critical nature of managing the detailing around the water treatment um, for such events because you can't afford to have such a situation. And uh, actually, Mirtha, who was managing many of the pools adjoining that that situ you know that facility, were pulled into you know uh, support. Um, in actually removing the water from those pools and filling it up with uh, the, the water from the, uh, the other Mirtha pools to literally save the Olympic Games, and uh, which would have be, been a further blush to the organizer, organizers. So just to give an idea, you know, it's, there are lots of critical elements that come together, and um, that's a glimpse of uh, the Rio Olympic Games. Coming to the bottom left, um, this is a pool which is um, relatively closer to on uh, to where we are in Hong Kong. Uh, it's in uh, the heart of Hong Kong. It's the Victoria Park swimming pool. Now, this pool, for example, uh, is interesting because it's a community project. It's a government project, municipal project. But you know, so it is open to the public. They, they, their focus was on how do we have the highest level of utilization. At the same time, creating an environment for Hong Kong's top competitive swimmers to be able to train and to have a certain quality of events uh, here as well. So uh, this swimming pool, for example, hosts the short course World Cup champion, FINA short course world championships every year, uh, World Cup series, sorry. And uh, that, you, you know, allows, uh, so it's got, just to give a quick glimpse, it's got two mobile walls or what we call a bulkhead. So you can actually um, divide this 50 meter pool into three distinct areas for three different activities to happen. Uh, so you can, while you can, you know, move the two walls, uh, you can also, uh, th this pool also has two mobile floors. Uh, one is 25 meters by 10 meters and another is 25 meters by 15 meters. So this pool is otherwise two meters deep. So it's otherwise, you know, you don't have the opportunity to make it friendly for learners. But with the integration with the movable floors you have and the movable walls, you can 
uh, move, you know, create three different uh, spaces. One uh, area which is uh, 25 by 10 meters at a different depth at one end, and you can have a 25 by 15 meter pool, you know, pool at a different depth. And in the center, you can have a 25 by 25 meter pool uh, for training or competitions. Adjoining this pool, which is not visible in this photo, is a 33 meter by 25 meter uh, diving pool, which is five meters deep, but has a single movable floor of the same dimension of 33 meters by 25 meters, which comes completely up and can be put, uh, I mean, up to ground zero, but is usually, uh, you know, uh, parked at uh, a height of 1.2 meters, uh, which is roughly four feet. Now, that again allows for maximum utilization. Just to give an example of the pool that was built for the Commonwealth Games in Delhi at the SP Mukherjee Swimming Pool, uh, it was a pool that was um, upgraded for the Commonwealth Games, but in the process, subsequently, what they found was uh, they had eliminated even a couple of small pools, shallow pools that were there for teaching in the process, and they were left only with deep water. So they have a 50 meter by 25 meter, two meter deep pool, uh, competition pool, uh, another warm up pool, two meters deep, and then the diving pool, which is five meters deep. So literally, once the games got over, uh, they've been having challenges in um, finding optimal utilization of the pool subsequently because of this, uh, there's only deep water and it allows only for competent swimmers to engage. So, and, and this is just an example of how, uh, you know, when you're keeping a, a context of higher utilization uh, and, and again, mixed use, but mixed use for community and for high performance training with the option of competitions, this is uh, one example we wanted to share with you. At the bottom right, we have the uh, an example from a high school district in California. Uh, this is in Los Angeles, and uh, it's an example, like you can see, it's uh, from the picture that it integrates um, a ramp on the on the left side of the picture of the you know of the smaller pool you can see there is a ramp that allows for a wheelchair access to bring somebody into the pool it you know there are steps with uh, handrails um, to allow for adults uh, or or elderly people to support, get support and, and enter the pool or even young children to be able to uh, enter the pool in a safer manner uh, in the larger pool, uh, they've got two mobile walls or bulkheads, like I shared with you, uh, in this as well, where uh, you you know you can have uh, you can increase the capacity of the number of children you know who are training. To give an idea, USA um, is you know a few years back uh, had close to five hundred thousand registered competitive swimmers in uh, you know uh, and and. And today, the estimated numbers uh, are much higher. But to give an idea, that's the way that people pay attention because each of these are, uh, you know, assets in different ways and needs to be uh, designed to allow for uh, maximum utilization and make it as friendly as possible for every user uh, and built for purpose. Uh, the, you know, like in Hong Kong, uh, like you can notice, the there's an attention to the uh, the starting blocks, you know, like Jared mentioned, uh, they are the the top end uh, accessories. Um, so just a quick glimpse on some of these. Uh, I will move on. A, a, a quick glimpse, uh, and we can we'll probably dive in deeper in uh, another session for those interested more in our technology. But this gives a quick glimpse uh, of what our technology is about. Um, we have a factory uh, PVC laminated, hot laminated uh, stainless steel panels that form the walls of the pool, which are self-standing with the support of struts and buttresses, which are, you know, it's, it's a pre-engineered solution that comes in and is not, is bolted um, with nuts and bolts at the back and anchored to the floor with chemical anchors. We've got, um, 
uh, every element of the pool. So right from the gutter to a uh, recessed ladders to the recessed footrest, um, the uh, the anchors for the ladders for the lanes, everything, including uh, lights and inlets, everything is integrated in our panels. Our walls. And at the bottom, we have a reinforced special uh, PVC membrane that gets hot fused with, I mean, uh, gets fused with hot air um, to the, the PVC on the panel, on the stainless steel panel. So it creates a seamless um, connection. And there is no, as you can notice, there are no tiles, um, you know, except on the top. Uh, there's one layer of tiles that we uh, do recommend that just helps um, uh, both from a aesthetic, minor aesthetic uh, context, but more from an operations and maintenance perspective, just helps in managing uh, scum lines, uh, you know, on the rare occasion that you may not have uh, the water flowing over the gutter continuously. But um, the lanes and uh, the, the lanes are painted, you know, um, with a special uh, paint. So it just gives a very brief context of, um, you know, what our technology is about, but uh, when it comes to the finishes, we do have a range of uh, different finishes. Uh, and like Jay said, for the hospitality segment, where we are partners with the Marriotts and the Hiltons uh, globally, and uh, and you know we do offer a range of different um, uh, options that uh, we'll be happy to cover um, for those interested in the hospitality segment. So, we, but since the topic today was predominantly on the education pools that can be built and the points of attention from an education institutional perspective, as well as, uh, um, you know, from um, a competitive training uh, setup, uh, we've, we've prioritized um, some of the uh, basic technology for your reference. So in the competitive landscape, we are, have been consistently, like, like I gave an example in the beginning of the presentation, we have been consistently uh, the, been the choice for the Olympic Games and the World Championships. But on um, the, the swimming pool that Murtha has built in Bangalore at the Padukone Dravid Center for Sports Excellence <clears throat> was uh, the location for the Asian Age Group Championships in 2019. Uh, it also was the, uh, you know, a qualification event for the uh, Tokyo Olympic Games and when uh, you know the pool was being looked that you know, looked at that met all the criteria relevant for the uh, for, for an Olympic qualifying event uh, the pool in Bangalore stood out so even though it was a, built as a high performance training pool it got uh, prioritized to host the event and uh, hosted this after 20 years India was hosting this event after 20 years it's one of the biggest regional uh, championships Beyond that, again, from a regional perspective, uh, in, in 2019, uh, Murta built pools for the Pan American Games. Uh, like I said, you know, the World Championships in Guangzhou, Korea. That's an interesting one because it, it you know, the, the, the primary com competition pool for swimming event, uh, Murta had built it in 2015 for the World University Games, in, uh, and that was subsequently repurposed. Um, for the architects in, you know, in the, on this call, what might be interesting to note is way back when they were designing the facility for the University of Nambu, uh, they had already paid attention to the possibility of hosting a world championships in the future. So even the design of the building was made in a manner that allowed for a portion of the stadium to be um, that could be removed, a facade that could be removed, and uh, a temporary stand could be set up uh, to accommodate the seating for the World Championships. Quite a fascinating uh, case study, which again, for those interested, we'll be happy to uh, try and share more information. Uh, another one I would just pick up uh, from this list is the, um, you know, uh, the SEA Games in Philippines, yeah, which happened in December. The SEA Games stands for the Southeast Asian Games uh, that was in Philippines, uh, in Clark City. We uh, built the pools for that. Uh, we uh, built the pool for the International Swimming League. So for some of you who might be following swimming, uh, swimming recently initiated uh, 
something on the lines of uh, the various leagues that we see in India. Uh, it, it, swimming started one at a global level for swimming, and um, it's called the International Swimming League, and the grand final was held at Las Vegas at the Mandalay uh, Convention Center. The, uh, uh, an interesting thing on that was uh, where it, it was a short course pool, so it was a 25 meter pool. And uh, for the first time, there was an, um, uh, for a competition pool, there was an integration with a 21 meter acrylic panel for, uh, you know, uh, up, up to a meter deep so that uh, people or audiences could get a glimpse of uh, some of the water, uh, some of the action underwater which was again something that um, uh, was uh, you know was quite interesting so so we are also on the forefront of integrating many things uh, into uh, and, and again as designers we would request you all to look at how in, you know, certain elements could be integrated um, into your designs that can help create new outcomes um, these are some of the common questions that uh, you know we have, and we, me and my team have been coming across over the years, um, and um, you know, for the moment, I'll just take. I'm I'm just um, looking at um, in parallel some of the questions that that are in the chat panel, as well. So, um, we'll be. Happy to. Um, so let me start with some of the questions that are on the slide here that we've come across, like and and I've covered a few maybe earlier, but I'll repeat. So what is the preferred depth of the pool? Again, as um, as designers, um, as architects, as uh, engineers uh, or consultants, uh, we would want you to to you know check with your client on uh, what is what is the purpose of the pool. So depending on the purpose, whether they're looking at social outcomes, performance outcomes, or economic outcomes, or could be a combination of them, uh, it's a question of, um, you know, uh, we, there are different possibilities that uh, can be either um, uh, considered in a static manner, where you have uh, the depth profile created um, you know that cannot be changed later, but you know to the extent it's the usage is anticipated and then built. Or uh, like certain examples I've shared um, uh, today, where the usage could be unknown and there might be um, uh, different possibilities or flexibility on possibilities that a client may like to have uh, from a long-term perspective. Uh, there is uh, today the I mean th there are possibilities of integrating uh, mobile floors into it. Uh, does FINA give complete guidelines for constructing a pool? The so we have to understand that FINA uh, prioritizes its guidance on uh, uh, on the minimum I mean, uh, you know, or, or in some cases critical points of attention and in some cases minimum uh, tolerances that need to be respected uh, for uh, having a fair environment for high performance swimming to happen. But uh, uh, so so the, so while often we hear everyone talking about the length, uh, for example, 50 meter pool, uh, if you get down to the details, is has to be 50.025 uh, with a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5. Um, we you know and we do not um, uh, you know and and that because you you would then have to anticipate the touch pads coming on two sides of the pool. The, that's the timing systems. Um, but beyond the tolerances of uh, the, the dimensional tolerances, uh, another critical uh, point of attention that FINA does uh, now, uh, you know, has uh, been paying attention to more recently is turbulence. Uh, you know, so it's about uh, how the water that is entering the pool uh, through the inlets, how does it uh, impact the turbulence on the surface of the swimmers, as well as how does it impact, um, or, you know, the possibility of any currents. Be, you know, coming in the pool. Um, so, uh, we, we, from our from our side, we do a computational fluid dynamics 
to anticipate the circulation of the water in the pool at the design stage and then you know um, are able to validate that at the time of testing commissioning but an example of the level of detailing that one may need to pay attention to depending on the usage um, can a pool be designed uh, uh, but but um, you know so fina just gives some uh, sorry just to complete the fina portion fina does give a certain set of points of attention but it you, you know the, if it's used for a com competitive purpose but beyond that, what is also important to understand is, a, is uh, you know, what are the hygiene and safety considerations that need to also be considered in parallel uh, to ensure that the pool is safe and comfortable for all types of users, even beyond a competition. So where in certain countries uh, where the design standards or the um, uh, water treatment standards are of a higher level, uh, we we have to pay attention to those uh, guidelines. Um, for us, at the starting point, we use European standards as a starting point of our design. Uh, but you know, there's like I said, uh, if there's anything better at a local level, we can adhere to that. Uh, can a pool be designed at a high seismic zone region? The answer is uh, yes. But again, like we've been getting feedback and we've been building pools around the world in different regions uh, of high seismic activity, whether it's Los Angeles or uh, whether it is uh, uh, Christchurch in New Zealand or whether it's uh, Japan. Um, uh, you know, we do um, uh, understand, uh, you know, that there are certain critical points of attention and uh, so pools can be built, but one has to understand the repercussions on uh, the technology or the type of uh, construction material uh, that is used in such environments that allows the ability for uh, both absorption of um, uh, you know the tremors as well as uh, you know in case there is a, a breach uh, of the structure then to what extent can it be um, you know uh, brought back into action at the earliest um, elevated pools and, um, and and leakages. Yes, pools can be built uh, above uh, ground. Um, leakages are a, a concern. The question is, how does one pay attention on uh, having the relevant uh, waterproofing attention? So uh, leakage is one point of attention. The other one, uh, so when we build, we also pay attention on uh, a double layer waterproofing when it's above ground with a drainage in between uh, the two waterproofing layers to manage um, and to safeguard the situation. But beyond that, it's also about uh, when we're talking about elevated pools, we also bring attention on the weight of the overall system because that also impacts the kind of reinforcement uh, from a civil perspective that one um, has to consider. How about maintenance of the pool? Um, so uh, you know, I would I would stop here because I I noticed we just have a few minutes to cover some of your other questions, and um, you know I'm just quickly diving uh, into some of them. I know uh, you know we may not be able to answer all the questions uh, today. Uh, what we will be doing is we'll be consolidating uh, the questions we've not been able to answer, um, and we will. Uh, integrate those questions into our subsequent uh, webinars. So uh, to the extent we are unable to answer your question right away, uh, please bear with us and uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer those questions for you. Um, to start with, Mr. Ranjit Sankar has uh, has asked uh, which code is to be referred in India to for the design of a swimming pool um, in terms of space planning, area around the pool, water treatment location. The, uh, you know, we've in our current interactions, we found that there are no defined codes in India. Mirtha, through its work globally, and um, even Jay has uh, shared a reference of the Pools for All uh, document that Mirtha uh, worked very closely with FINA and some of the top architects as part of their, their facilities uh, team to even begin that process of defining some of these points you know, in terms of uh, what kind of space is required, the movement of people, the, uh, you know, where can you, put, you know, locate your services for right from a community pool 
to um, you know even the context of uh, a pool that might be used uh, for a world championships or the Olympic Games. So an AC one to an AC five. Um, so what we we happy to do is you know we we we'll, we'll try to see if we can share with you some uh, of the information. Like uh, Jay indicated, it's quite a comprehensive document. Uh, we are also uh, uh, working with some of the archi top architects in India, and we'll be happy for some of you who are in this group to get in touch with us if you would like to participate in the process. But we are uh, looking at uh, localizing it from an Indian context as well. Um, Bruno has asked what technology has been used in the diving pool uh, for adjustable floor. Um, in terms of uh, the adjustable floor, we, you know, there are uh, the mobile floor. There are different technologies that are available today. Be, you know, some are flotation based, uh, which means that it uh, the floating floor has the ability, it has the buoyancy to float and hence will naturally come up and be at the ground level. Um, a pool at, um, at the Melbourne Aquatic Center in, um, in Melbourne um, is an example of that, where at the end of the swimming sessions in the evening, they bring the floor back to ground zero and they repurpose the pool for uh, special events, you know, because it has the ability to take the weight. And then um, they, they're, they're you know, using a, a pulley mechanism uh, they are able to pull the flow back down uh, when when it has to be used for swimming. So the different technologies, and we're happy to, you know, as I give, I've just given an example, and then we can deep dive you know, further into that. Uh, Mr. Shivakumar said, "How do you differentiate one single pool um, into two? Uh, so uh, to begin with, the use of uh, a mobile wall or as the technical term that we use is uh, the use of a mobile bulkhead. So by the using a mobile bulkhead, it's it's a platform that can uh, help in dividing the pool into two different portions. Or it you know depending on um, you know like the example I gave of Hong Kong, you can have if you have two bulkheads in the same 50 meter pool, you can have three different areas of uh, of engagement. So uh, the bulkheads are the primary. Uh, uh, you know, um, elements used to demarcate. Uh, we are doing a project in Bangalore uh, as you speak, and uh, which will have India's first mobile uh, bulkhead uh, for some of you to even see in India soon. Um, Mr. Muthu Manikan Ramaswamy has asked, will PVC laminate act as thermal insulation too? Uh, the answer, uh, it, so the PVC laminates are, uh, you know, it's on the PVC panel on the stainless steel panel is only 0.5 mm. Uh, it will, it may have some level of um, uh, ability to manage uh, thermal insulation, but um, uh, it's more in the context of what can be done uh, behind the, the pool. So for example, again, um, you know, in the Murtha technology, which is a self-standing um, uh, PVC, I mean, um, uh, panels, we can have a corridor in indoor pools. We can have a corridor around the pool. The corridor behind the pool, the panels, uh, becomes a, a, you know, a manner of insulation. So in many countries where uh, the temperatures get very, very cold, um, it's quite common to see uh, them using our technology in conjunction with having a corridor where all the electromechanical elements can also be housed and makes all the electro uh, electrical and uh, mechanical elements visible for maintenance. Uh, we've had Tanushri uh, request, you know, asking uh, us since it's a PVC membrane, chlorine reaction with the same or leaching, is that a concern? The answer is, uh, not in not in the PVC membranes. Um, so so you know this is definitely a point of attention, and that's the reason why uh, it, it is very important to understand the quality of uh, PVC membrane that uh, is being considered uh, for it. So for example, Murtha has been dealing 
uh, around the world with different regulatory requirements, um, not, you know, and uh, quality of water or the amount of chlorine also that uh, is required in um, making the pool or disinfecting the pool. And, uh, you know, has uh, continuously through its own learning has developed uh, a membrane along with its partner that addresses um, uh, this particular issue and gives uh, long life uh, to it. Uh, I understand uh, we've run out of time uh, for this session. Uh, like I said, uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, the questions, uh, you know, and apologies if I haven't been able to answer uh, all of them at this stage. Uh, but like we've committed, we will be noting down and, and some of you uh, who may have questions subsequently, we would request you again to note it down and share that with um, uh, Mr. Jaishankar. If there's any other feedback that you could share, uh, you know, on how we could keep improving on making this more impactful for each of you, we are welcome to your thoughts and suggestions. Uh, and with this, uh, you know, I would again like to uh, thank. I'd like to thank all the participants uh, of the of this call, and um, you know we look forward to your uh, participation in the future webinars as well. And to the extent you can also um, please um, share it in your extended uh, you know professional communities, and we would like to um, have um, more participate in the process. Thank you so much.